Yo, what is up you guys and welcome to another video. My name is Benji and in today's video, we're gonna go over options trading. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to sell puts and sell calls. So when it comes to the Robinhood brokerage, the options trading feature isn't automatically implemented on the brokerage account. You're gonna have to go into settings and sign up for it. It's basically apply for it. It's pretty easy to get accepted. I think you just need to have like a few thousand dollars in your portfolio. So once you're accepted for the options trading feature, then you can start trading options. So once the feature is live, you can go to any stock. So let's just choose AT&T, for example, since AT&T is one of my favorite dividend stocks. And now look down here, we do now have the box that says Trade T Options. So whenever you're looking to trade options on the Robin and Brokerage, uh, you're always going to want to go to the stock and then go into here and click um, into this page. And this is going to be where all the magic happens. So in today's video, since we are only going to be talking about selling calls and puts, let's move it to the sell tab, you know, just to move things forward here. A few metrics that are going to be really important when selling calls and puts or trading options really in general is make sure that you're on the right stock and make sure that it's at a price that you're willing to work with. Next, of course, make sure that you're on the sell tab. Um, if you are looking to sell calls and puts like I do, I'm not really into buying options at the moment. I might make a video in the future going over buying options, but it's a little bit more technical and it's not really something that goes along with my current strategy of dividend investing. So um, we're gonna just talk about selling calls and puts as of today. Another thing that's important is the expiration date. If you click on this tab here, there's all different kinds of dates in here. Um, they stretch out uh, even a few years from now. So the expiration date is important because that's the day that your options contract basically expires. And we'll talk more about that in a second here. Another important metric that you're going to want to see on this page is always find where the share price is at. This is going to be sort of a placeholder in between, you know, um, a price above the share price and a price below the share price. So always have an idea of where the share price is at on this page and maybe start looking at that first. That's what I always do at least. So when you're trading options but selling calls and puts, you're always going to have premiums over here. All these little tabs on the right-hand side represent a premium. And keep in mind, you guys, when we're trading options, you are always talking about 100 shares of whatever stock it is. So for example, this is not $1.05, this is $105. So keep in mind, you are always going to be multiplying this number times 100 because one option contract always equals 100 shares of whatever stock we're talking about. So if you guys happen to be just getting started with this and you don't want to mess around with all that much budget at this point, let's go to a cheaper stock like GoPro. This is a pretty popular one that people like to trade options with um, because the stock price is, of course, like under $5. So you're dealing with like, you know, $500 uh, of budget because, of course, we have to always multiply the stock number by 100 because 100 shares equals one contract. So just like with AT&T, GoPro has the different expiration dates here. We have all the premiums here. They all represent different amounts of premiums that you could make if you are willing to sell these different calls. So now in simple terms, I'm going to go over how the math works. Uh, it's much more technical than this. So, you know, all you experts out there, don't get mad at me. I just started doing this, you know, uh, literally a, about a month ago. So I'm no expert on this, but I did want to make a video and show you guys exactly how I've done this to make some extra income and how you guys can hopefully implement it to hopefully make some extra income for yourself. When trading options, selling calls is considered selling a covered call. When you are selling calls, you are going to need to have 100 shares of whatever stock you're talking about in order to sell a covered call. I also am going to go over some of my real life examples here in my portfolio in a minute here. I always hate watching these videos and seeing people just go over all theoretical examples. I really want to show you guys some real life examples too in a second here, so stick around. But for example, with GoPro, let's say we have 100 shares of GoPro at $4.79 per share. So that's $479 altogether. That's if, for example, we bought GoPro at this moment. So let's just say we have $479 worth of GoPro. So when selling covered calls of a stock, you always have to keep in mind the strike price. The strike price is the amount that the share we need to get to in order for someone else on the other side to be able to buy and exercise this option contract. So for example, if you bought 100 shares of GoPro at $4.79, so you, your total cost is $479, that's how much you have into this entire uh, contract. Again, 100 shares of GoPro equals one contract, that's why we're always multiplying it by 100. You could then go ahead and sell a covered call because you own 100 shares of GoPro with an expiration date of June 5th, which means that the contract expires on June 5th, for a strike price of $5 and earn $0.12 cents times 100. Remember, you always times the premium by 100, so $12. So the way that it would work is that you would click on here and then you would go to continue and then basically contracts, 100 shares per contract. So you would have one contract you would type in. And then with limit price, there's always going to be a bid and ask. If you want to get this contract filled, you know, um, almost guaranteed, just, just go to the lower end of the bid and ask and this contract will be filled because keep in mind, these contracts still have to be filled just like when you're buying stocks. You can't just put any price out there and expect to get it. It has to be filled like any other trade. Let's say we go ahead and we are okay with uh, nine cents per share. So now again, we're getting nine cents per share of premium. This is all premium right here. So 
you are getting $9 regardless of what happens here in premium. And you are basically putting out into the universe, into the market, a contract saying that if GoPro does hit $5 or more by June 5th, you are willing to sell your 100 shares for $5 and you are willing to accept the $9 of premium. So this might seem too good to be true because you're saying, okay, I'm earning $9 of premium just to offer to sell GoPro for more than it's at right now. And yes, that's actually really how it works. And that is why this is such an awesome method. But the few downsides, of course, is let's say you locked in this contract, you sold this covered call for a $5 strike price, you earned your $9, you know, you take the $9 and you invest into more stock, you really, you know, do whatever you want with the $9, it's your money, regardless at this point, you get to keep the premium regardless. That is one of the coolest things about this. You get to keep the premium regardless. So we're currently around a week out from the expiration dates. So let's say GoPro next Monday goes down to $450, $4, $350, $3. Let's say GoPro just starts tanking and, you know, goes down and down and down. And let's say that keeps happening all the way up until your expiration date of June 5th. June 5th goes by and GoPro is way underneath the strike price of $5, the strike price that you basically implement it. Now, what's going to happen is absolutely nothing. This contract will not be exercised. Robinhood will give you back your 100 shares of collateral of GoPro and you'll move on with your life and you'll get to keep the premium regardless. But now let's say on the other side, and this is the downside of this, let's say GoPro has some crazy news that comes out and, you know, they're coming out with a new camera and GoPro just shoots up to, you know, $8 per share. So since you bought GoPro at $4.79, 100 shares of it at $479 altogether, GoPro is now at $8 per share and you were forced to sell GoPro at a strike price of $5 because that's what you wrote on the contract. That's the amount that you're willing to sell GoPro for. So that is definitely something to think about and some of the downside when selling covered calls is that whatever strike price you pick, you are forced to sell those shares if the price of the stock does hit or go above that strike price, of course. So you do have a few choices here though, which is pretty cool. You have other strike prices to choose from. So let's say GoPro, you spent $4.79 on per share. So $4.79, again, for all the shares, one contract. Let's say you're like, I really want to keep my shares of GoPro, but I also want to earn some premium in the meantime because, you know, I deserve to earn some extra money. So you could go deeper and deeper out of the money. And let's say you could choose a $6 strike price. It's pretty unlikely that GoPro is going to hit $6 before June 5th. Let's all be honest here. But keep in mind, that's why you're only going to earn probably a 2 to $5 uh, premium for selling the covered calls for GoPro with a strike price so out of the money at $6 and so on and so forth. So, so when selling calls, the concept is pretty simple. The higher the strike price, the further away from the share price, you're going to earn most likely less premium for, for selling that call and putting it out into the market. So with selling covered calls, I want to show you guys some real life examples. I don't know about you guys, but seeing someone's portfolio and actually seeing them own the stocks and, you know, do the actual thing helps me learn a lot better than just all that theory stuff. Although the theory stuff does work too, but let's take a look at at t So currently I own 330 shares of at t So how many contracts do I have? I have three contracts and I guess plus 30 stocks because each contract equals 100 shares. So if we go to trade options with at t we go to sell, we go to calls, expiration date this next week you know you can always change it further out and keep in mind you guys the further out that you do set the expiration date the more premium that you are going to get because again there's just more chances that the covered call will be exercised because there's more time involved but i'm really not trying to wait all that long so let's just keep it simple let's you know do next week again you know same thing as last time so i currently own over 300 shares of at&t in my portfolio so i really could do this right now so i could go to sell call so now let's take a look at all these premiums. Let's take a look at the strike prices. Let's take a look at what's going on here. So I own all my AT&T shares at an average cost of around $31, let's just say, right around there. So at this price, if I were to sell at the strike price of $31, it wouldn't really do any good for me because I'm not really gonna make any profit off the strike price. Um, of course, I would make the profit from the premium, which is pretty cool. And keep in mind, you guys, you make this premium per contract. So since I own three contracts at AT&T, since I own 300 plus shares, I'm going to be able to receive $41 times three now of premium. So this is definitely where it gets fun and this is where it gets motivating to just try to stack as many shares of different companies as you can. Cause then of course sometime in the future we can all sell covered calls and make some nice premium per week off of just owning shares of these different stocks. So let's look at something that would actually make sense for me. So at and I'm really not looking to sell my at and anytime soon. I like at and I wanna keep my shares. Um, I have a good average cost on all my shares. But let's look at a strike price pretty far out of the money. So $33 for next week. I don't know about you guys, but I do not think AT&T is going to hit 33 or above by next week. I just think it's pretty unlikely. AT&T pretty much trades around like $28 to $31 most of the time. So I would most likely choose this one because the strike price is so far away from the share price. 
and I don't see AT and T hitting thirty three dollars by next week. So let's see what premium they're offering. They're offering a four dollar premium per contract, so four dollars times three because I do own three contracts. So that's you know twelve dollars. But of course, we have to take in mind that there's a limit price, so it might not get billed if we do four dollars per contract. So let's just say three dollars. So. So let's put the limit price at three cents per share because we know that'll be filled because it's on the lower end of the bid and ask. Uh, we do own three different contracts of AT&T and that will give us a minimum premium credit of $9. So basically we are putting out a contract saying that if AT&T hits $33 or above, we will sell our 300 shares of AT&T at $33. This is because that's our strike price. And for doing so, just for putting the option out there, we are going to earn $9 in premium regardless. So again, if AT&T by next week doesn't hit $33, what happens? Nothing. I get my shares back from my collateral and I keep my $9 and I go on my way and I can do this over and over again. I can do this next week again and I can do it the following week and the following week and the following week. So let's say AT&T hits $34 one of these weeks. What happens is, of course, I will have to sell all my shares of AT&T, well, at least my three contracts, so 300 shares of AT&T at a strike price of $33, which again, I bought all my AT&T for the most part at around $31. So I would be making $2 a profit you know, net net off of each share of AT&T. Plus I would of course earn whatever premium was paid to me at that point. So I hope that gives you guys a basic idea of what you need to know when selling covered calls. There's a lot more that goes into it, honestly, but that's just the basic overview. Um, if I didn't miss on anything, of course, leave any comments down below and I can go over different things in more detail, but that's pretty much all there is to it. So now that you know how to sell calls, let's talk about selling puts. So remember in selling calls, you have to actually own 100 shares of whatever stock that you're selling calls on. With puts, you don't need 100 shares of the stock. You don't need any shares of the stock. But what you do need instead is the amount of money that it would cost to buy 100 shares of whatever stock. So all the metrics and all these different things are exactly the same as it was when we were selling calls, but now it's a little bit different. So now what you would do is, of course, you would find whatever stock you want. So let's say GoPro is at $4.79 still per share. Again, we're always talking in contracts still. This is always talking in contracts. Whenever you're trading options, it's always contracts. One contract equals 100 shares. So keep that in mind, you guys. When we were selling calls, we were putting out contracts in order to sell the shares that we already owned. When we're selling puts, we're putting out contracts out there to say that we'll buy shares with money that we own. So let's do an example, which is one contract to keep it easy, which is 100 shares. So, so if you were to choose this option right here, you were basically writing a contract saying that you were willing to buy GoPro for $4.50 per share. So $450 altogether on or before June 5th, because that's your expiration date for the strike price. So $450 altogether, and you will receive a premium of $13. So in order to sell a put, you will of course need to already have the balance inside of your portfolio, inside the cash balance, because they are going to pull that out as collateral because they're not just going to take your word for it. They are going to actually pull that money out. So if you implement this trade right here, Robinhood will take $450 out of your cash balance until the expiration date because if, if the price does go down or below this point, you will be forced to buy 100 shares of GoPro at $4.50 per share. So $450 altogether. And the premiums are the same. You get to keep the premium regardless, which is kind of cool. Um, you can use the premium for really whatever you want. That doesn't really make a difference. You get the premium regardless on both sides of this. So now again, let's look at some real life examples in my portfolio. Last week, I sold a put on the stock century link for a $10 strike price because it was a little bit over $10. So I figured, I figured why not sell a put on CenturyLink for $10 and earn $45 of premium because that's what they were offering at that moment. So I got the $45 of premium, which is absolutely awesome. I mean, that's literally like free money. Just to put a contract out there saying that I'll buy 100 shares of CenturyLink if it does happen to hit $10 by chance, which I didn't think that it was going to. Well, it did hit $10. It actually hit $9.83 CTL price expiration. So the option to get exercise. So I had to buy 100 shares of CenturyLink at $10 when the price was actually at $9.83. Now the good thing is, of course, I got to keep the premium. So net, so net, net, I didn't really lose anything because I bought, you know, these shares of CenturyLink at $10 a piece. The price was a little bit lower, but I did, of course, get to keep the premium that I got um, at the beginning of the trade anyway. So net, net, I am up a little bit of money if I were to just to sell these. Um, so this is just a really good example of what can actually happen um, if you're selling puts and it does get exercised. But as you guys see down here, I sold other puts this last week also and zero, zero, zero because they didn't get exercised. So I just got to keep the premium and go along with my day. 
Now, some bad things that can happen, of course. Let's say you sell a put for a GoPro at $4.50 because you feel like, you know, it probably won't hit four fifty dollars strike price. But if this option does happen to get exercised and you do happen to have to buy 100 shares of GoPro at $4.50 per share, you wouldn't be mad because let's say you really just like this stock and, you know, it's a stock that you really want to have in your portfolio. So let's say before expiration, it goes down there and you are forced to buy with the 100 shares of GoPro at $4.50 because that's your strike price. And let's say GoPro goes down to, I don't know, $2 for the next year because there's some scandal going on or something. Well, then, of course, at that point, this trade would have been a really, you know, backwards trade. You wouldn't have done well on it. And that's, of course, somewhat of the downside of it. But let's say something else happens. You sell a put for GoPro, one contract, at $4.50 per share. And let's say GoPro goes up to, you know, five fifty or $6. Well, then, of course, your option will not be exercised because it's not even close to the amount of the strike price that you would need to hit for it to be exercised. And you will literally just make that free money and premium and go along with your day. So that gives you guys some of the basics when it comes to selling puts. It's pretty simple. Um, it's sort of like selling calls, but instead of having to have the stocks, you have to have the money as collateral. Um, and of course, if the strike price is hit, you'll be forced to buy. And when you're selling calls, if the strike price is hit, you will, of course, be forced to sell. Now I want to give you guys another real life example, a stock like AT&T that I like a lot, that I do want to acquire more in my portfolio. This might be a really good stock to sell some puts with. So for AT&T, my average cost right now in my portfolio is around like 31 bucks. So let's say I want to add 100 more shares into my portfolio at, of course, a lower cost to keep lower my average cost because that's, you know, dollar cost average sheet and is king here. As we scroll down, let's see what they have here, different strike prices. So $29.50. Would I be okay with being forced to buy 100 shares of AT&T at $29.50 per share? I would be very much so okay with that, in my opinion. I mean, it's a great dividend stock, and I'd love to add more AT&T in my portfolio for $29.50. So next, let's take a look at what the premium is offering. So the premium looks like $0.12 cents to $0.15, cents, which is $12 to $15 a premium, just to put this sold put out there. So this would be a great example, a great real life example of something that I would actually be doing in my portfolio and something that I have been doing in my portfolio over the last few weeks. It's honestly a really good method for someone like me because I am looking to acquire more of these high quality stocks at lower prices, of course, and why not get paid a premium to do so? Selling puts and selling calls has been able to make me an average of around like $50 to $100 of extra income per week, and I've only been doing a tiny, tiny bit of it over the last few weeks. It's really a win-win method for me, at least in my portfolio and my time outlook, because I'm only going to be trading options with stocks that I really want to be messing with. I don't stick with companies that you're familiar with, how they move in the market on an average basis. And I think you guys will do a great job. Also, I'm definitely down to make more videos about options trading specifically. I think options trading is a cool method, and I'm definitely going to continue to implement it in my portfolio. Side note, make sure to subscribe, you guys. We have $24,000 of deposit coming into the portfolio on Monday, which is in a few days here. So make sure to subscribe to the portfolio to see what we're going to be doing next in the portfolio. We do have some big plans coming up. As always, thank you guys again so much for stopping by and watching. Best of luck with your portfolios, and I'll see you in the next video.